I am farming uh, over half a billion gold per hour, but even better than that, I prefer to get a couple of thousand Ethereum and a couple of hundred millions gold per hour, and it will increase as my build gets better. Probably tomorrow I will be doing more. You need to learn both how to make it and how to spend uh, ever. Both things are important in this guide. We're going to talk about some secrets that there are about how to spawn certain things uh, and uh, now how to first spend it. Let's talk about how to spend it. Then we're going to talk how to make it. If you're farming below tier 7, you do not want to get the uh, materials chest. You want to get the gold chest. In my opinion, it's better than the items chest. Unless you specifically need items. Why is the gold chest good? Well, the value is pretty high. You get a lot of uh, millions of gold from it. And as you can see, we'll be able to farm hundreds of error per run. What I like to do instead, if you can farm uh, tier 7 and above, then it becomes insane. Tier 7 and above, tier 7 and... Uh, tier 7 is the best, in my opinion, because it's both fast and can get this. So, you can get an Ethereum from the Materials Chest. The Materials Chest will give you, instead of 25 Ingolith, it will give you 25 Ethereum. So, it pretty much triples in value when you get up uh, from tier 6 to tier 7. And that's insane, you can get uh, over 500 Ethereum per run. On top of getting also a couple of Stygian stones, uh, which uh, were selling for 40 mil today, I'm sure that they're gonna go down, and they probably already went down quite a bit. But with that, also you can do tormented bosses, which is pretty good. Okay, now let's talk about how to make uh, instead uh, the most error as possible and how the hell horde functions. How does the hell horde functions? Well, I'll give you already the biggest secret, which is. Uh, some modifiers, for example, Hellfire Rains Upon You, unlock other modifiers that are actually good. So some of the shitty ones also allow you to get some of the best ones. Before we talk about that though, let's talk about the three different types of events that you can encounter. The Soul Spires, which look like this. You can get the, the um, I call them cocoons, uh, they're more like tumors and they can spawn fiends once they open. And the last one is the a ferric mass that looks like this. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the cocoon and how they work. Two of those mechanics are kind of annoying. One is the cocoon, you actually have to get close to it before the animation starts. After the animation is over, a fiend will spawn and you kill it. This is in the middle. It's not super annoying, but it doesn't have to be avoided as an upgrade. But if you can avoid it, the other mass is one of the best ones. It is the best one of the mechanics, as you can kill it even from range, it spawns immediately and it's not protected by anything. The Soul Spire is the most annoying, as you have to be inside it and then start killing mobs, it takes a lot of time, immune from ranged, and it's pretty much a disaster if you start getting into um, upgrading it, you start getting a lot of upgrades for this and then uh, it's over, you're gonna get nothing out of it. So. Let's go back about what we do. Mainly, there's one build that I like to go for. It is uh, the one related to the Hellborns. Anything Hellborn is really good. But how do we want to do this? You really want to build yourself a deck that makes sense. Certain things are good early, but then are going to be bad if you take them later on. Generally speaking, the best thing you can do to start will be get either an Hellfire, which will unlock... Uh, Another modifiers, more modifiers for Hellborns later on. It might seem like not a great one because Hellfire is really annoying, but because it has uh, locked behind it uh, more of the Hell Hellborn trees, it's really good. The Hellborns uh, are very easy to kill, they give you a lot of header and have really good upgrades. So you want to get into that build as soon as you can, if possible. The second best thing to get early is uh, normal monster damage plus 25% and killing them spawns other events 50% faster. This is um, really good to get early and I will get two of them if possible every time, but I wouldn't get more than two and especially definitely not four. I've tried it and then you yeah, spawn a lot of events that give you nothing and you end up with no adder at all. There are also something that I call bait which are like, technically, this should be good, right? For example, uh, Adder Lords are this one, pretty much bosses. They spawn and they grant three Adder each, plus more Adder before that. They should technically be good, but because you're trying to run actually decently high health tiers, not the lowest ones, they actually take quite a bit of time to kill, especially at seven plus. And in my opinion, because you spend so much time killing them, you spawn less events, 
and then get less error overall. So I try to avoid this uh, whenever possible, or I just don't kill them and I drag them around till the end. But in my opinion, they're not great. Also because by not killing them, you don't spawn more events if you keep them going around. Other things like uh, Ether Fiends, Grand Plus One Ether are okay. Anything that is not Spires generally is okay to take if you don't have anything else. There is also some consideration to do. There are some of them that are actually quite decent. For example, uh, move speed, uh, trying to avoid ones that uh, block you like the other lords, sometimes I just take move speed because it allows me to move around more quickly and I avoid things that make me lose time, like uh, getting the spires, double HP is annoying, uh, uh, summoning other lords, in my opinion, is bad because it uh, locks me behind having to kill them and then I waste a lot of time. So I actually sometimes prefer to get just move speed and move on and, and cl clear quick. Things like also like explosions that help you clear can actually be fine as long as you try to go for like one build in mine. Mainly Hellborn is my favorite build and after that uh, things that have to do with the etheric mass uh, are fine as well. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, positioning for this map. So you want to you wanna imagine that pretty much there is four cardinal direction like in the real world, north, east, south and west. And you want to be positioned right uh, near them. Because that's where the events spawn, they spawn after you kill a certain amount of mobs, and uh, some of them, of course, are only gonna spawn if you're either close or can only be killed if you are inside them, the spires, and the cocoons only spawn if you're close enough to them. So my strategy is to say between them, between a spawn and the center, as you can see in this minimap, that way, if it happens to be there, it's it's a spire or it's a cocoon, it will activate and I can clear it. And generally that is my strategy. Uh, the best thing to do is being with a four man and each person tries to control their corner, but you can still move around that is allowed. Another thing I do, in my opinion, if you're playing solo, play more tanky because no one is going to revive you and you have only a couple of lives in tier one and tier two. This is my strategy and overall the rules that I follow for this guide. And uh, let me know if it has helped you uh, get more materials per hour. See you in the next video.